so in this tutorial we are going to cover arrays so array is a structured data type and so let me first define what an array is so an array is a collection of variables of the same type that are referenced by a common name so let me write it here an array is collection of variables collection of variables of the same I should write data type of the same data type referenced that are referenced by a common name so before explaining the definition of what an array is let us take an, ex an example that will represent why we need arrays so let us discuss this example and in this example we will get to know the reason why arrays should be used and when will we need arrays so the first thing is let's suppose there is a classroom and there are 50 students in a classroom so the teacher says that you will have to assign the marks of each student so let's suppose the number one student the student one has 98 marks out of 100 so let's suppose the total marks is 100 and the student has got 98 marks so similarly there will be a student 2 then 3 up till 50 and there will be a list of the marks corresponding to the student so here is the problem let's suppose there are 150 students so for 150 students you will have to declare 150 variables so let's suppose you say that you will assign the marks to the first student like this but this will become an overwhelming task like you'll have to assign 150 variables every time and you will have to assign the marks which is a very overwhelming task so in such a case arrays are used so in this example you can see here that the column marks has the same data type we know that the data type of marks of each student will be int or float or we can define it ourselves so we can say that all the students and the marks of all the students have the same data type so it is a collection of variables of same data type but instead of using lots of variables we are going to use a single variable so the way to declare an array is like this so int marks and let's suppose there are 50 students so I will write 50 in square brackets so this is an array of 50 marks so whenever you are writing this line this will create 50 continuous blocks in the main memory so let's suppose this is our memory 
So this will create this line will create an array with one with 50 with 50 blocks. This will be up to 50 but we will write 49 here because referencing starts with 0. So 0 to 49 will be 50 because we are starting from 0 not 1. So in the main memory this marks will have this is an array whenever you are writing the square braces in front of a variable or a name this is a common name and then you're writing an integer value here you'll have to write integer value here so it will create 50 space or you can say 50 blocks for the same data type int so let's suppose I want to know the marks of the student 5 so in this memory this memory if you want to reference it is like this so if you want to access any block you will just have to write it like this let's suppose I want to change the marks of the fifth student so the fifth student is fourth because 0 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 the fifth student so the fifth student will be 4 and let's suppose you want to assign 60 or let's say 70 marks to the student so you will write it like this so this will assign the fourth the block with the fourth index so the block with the fourth index will be assigned with 70 similarly you can create more types of arrays like you can change the name here and change the integer value here and this will create continuous blocks so I will write here continuous blocks and the number of blocks depend on this number so it's 50 in our case so remember that the indexing this is index of an array so remember that indexing starts from 0 not 1 so if you want to assign marks to the first student you will have to write it 0 let's suppose the student has got 85 marks so you will have to write it like this so arrays are simple and they are used when you are when you need to assign a lot of variables which have the same data type and you want to assign them under a common name so arrays are structured data type so basically arrays are of two types they are of two types number one is single dimensional and we have discussed single dimensional arrays here so this is an example of a single dimensional array because the array has only one dimension that is 0 1 2 3 it's just like in a linear form number two is the multi-dimensional arrays and multi-dimensional arrays are just like a table we know that a table consists of rows and columns let's suppose this is a table with three columns one two three and three rows so if you want to create an array like this you will have to write it like this like int array 3 comma 3 so this is the way to declare 
a multi-dimensional array. See, we are using two types here. The first one represents the number of rows. The second one represents number of columns. So the indexing in this case will be like this, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So let's suppose you want to access this block or you want to assign some value to this block. So what you are going to do is you are going to write the column name. The column corresponding to this block is 1. Sorry, the row name. The first one is the row. So we will write the row and then the column. So now we can just assign some value to it like 2 or 3 or anything. So this is a multi-dimensional array and multi-dimensional array are used when the data type is like in a table format. This is just like a table format. Arrays are used for a lot of purposes and the main operations that we perform on arrays is searching and sometimes sorting. These are the two algorithms and there are a lot of algorithms that can be performed on arrays. So since in this tutorial we are not going to cover these algorithms, we will just uh, write, we will just write in our program, we will implement arrays in our program and we will assign value to each block and then we will display the whole array. So let's move on to our C line IDE and look how act arrays are implemented in C++. Okay, so first of all, let us define an array which have, let's suppose, five blocks. So we are going to create an array of five blocks and we know that the indexing will start from zero. So this is an array of five elements. So now what we need to do is we will take input from the user and we will store the value in the array. So let's suppose I want to insert a value given by the user. So instead of writing just the variable name, I will proceed it with the index value. So you can see here that this is an index value. So at index 1, you know that the indexing starts from 0. So you can also write 0 here. So at index 0, or you can say the first block of this array, the user will input something. We know that C in and this operator is used to take input from the user, from the console. So this is the way in which you can take input from the user. But what if I say I want to take input of 50 users? Let's suppose there are 50 users. Sorry, let's suppose there are 50 students and I want the marks of 50 students. So I will have to write this line 50 times. So instead of writing this line 50 times, we will run a loop 50 times. And after every loop, we will increase the value. We will increase the index value. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, we will write a for loop, then the circular brackets. Then the first step is to initialize the value of i, then the condition should be i less than and it should run between the size of the array which is 50 for uh, because we don't want to enter 50 in this case for simplicity we will write 5 then after every one loop 
we will just increment the value of i and instead of writing 0 here I will write i here so since there is only one line I do not need to write the curly brackets here but I will write it so that it will be clear that this is of this for loop so you can see here that this for loop runs like this the value of i will be 0 so the i will be 0 and the user will enter the value which will be st which will get stored at the 0th position so if we say that user want to enter something now there are 5 blocks 1 2 3 4 5 and the indexing is like this 0 1 2 3 4 so we don't need this so this is our max array and whenever user want to write something to the zeroth part the value gets stored here suppose the user entered 80 so we will write 80 here then the value of i will be incremented by 1 so this is incrementation we are incrementing and then we will check whether it is less than 5 so that we do not exceed the number of elements in the array because it is 5 we cannot access the position 6 so uh, if the max is of 5 you cannot write max 6 because there is no max 6 block there is not even mark fifth block why because the indexing value is from 0 and it will go till 4 only so you cannot write marks 5 equals to 35 or any value because you cannot access this index value so this is a basic array and now we have just added some values to this array now it's the time that we should print it to print every value there let's suppose I want to print the third value of the array so I will write 2 here because indexing starts from 0 and then 1 and then 2 so the 2 will be the third element so this will display the third element to display all the elements of the array I will just use for loop similar similar to this I will just write C out and the loop will run again till 5 and then plus plus J and then I will just write C out marks j at j position and then this so this is a simple example of an array of five elements so this is a single dimensional array you can see that this is a single dimensional array and when we will run this program it will run uh, it is very simple so i'm not going to run it you can try it on your own in the ide you will have to enter the values make sure that it is a smaller value here because or else it will take a lot of time for you to write the whole values so then you will you can print out elements using a for loop so a for loop is used to access the you can say the elements of the arrays so if you want to create a multi-dimensional array so let's suppose you want to create a multi-dimensional array so in that case you will have to write it like this let's suppose you want to create a multi-dimensional array with number of rows five number of rows and six number of columns so in that case you're not going to use this type of for loop you will use nested for loops so for nested for loops it will be like int i equals 0 i less than 5 then i 
then plus plus i and then in this for loop you will have to create another for loop and j equals 0 j less than the number of columns is 6 then plus plus j and then you will you can write it like this marks i and then j so the reason why we are using nested loop is because let's suppose you want to access the let's suppose this is our array marks three and three so now you want to now let's see just this for loop initial value of i is 0 and j is 0 so the user will enter the value which will get stored at position 0 comma 0 so this will be filled in the next run the value of i will remain 0 but the value of j will be incremented because this is a nested for loop so now 0 comma 1 will be accessed so 0 and 1 so this will be filled and similarly it will move on and on and then after the j ends it will go to the for loop and then the value of i is incremented to 1 and then 1 comma 0 is accessed then again the nested for loop will occur so in this way we are going to fill up our multi-dimensional array with the values so arrays are useful and we are we will use it a lot of times and just we will also apply some algorithms on these arrays so the algorithms were are searching and sorting we will just see them in the further tutorials but this is the basics of arrays so we have just covered the basics of arrays with our simple program thanks for watching